Oh, hey, didn't see you there. My name's Casey. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube. Hey, and, and you know what? What we're doing right now? We're gonna learn about shapes. People have been asking me about this so much. This, it sounds like a, like a kindergarten video, like today we're learning about shapes, but I'm talking about shape nodes inside of Fusion, okay? So let's go. I'm just gonna start with a good old fashioned new composition here in Fusion. I'll bring a classic black background here and just connect it to our media out. Oh, it's so good so far. Let's make this a little more interesting real quick. You guys know how I do. Select this background where it says solid color here in the inspector. Let's go to four color. And I just like to make something that isn't just plain black, okay? So now it's just something that's a little more interesting. Whoo! Let's get into the shapes. You may notice on your toolbar here, there's no shape buttons. That's because the shapes are sort of hidden. So if you go up to effects library, and twirl down tools and go down to shape. Here's where we're at. There are 13 different tools that are related to shapes. And you know what I did just to make things easier? I went ahead and made a custom toolbar down here. If you don't know how to do that, check out this video right here, but I'm gonna right click here and switch to my shapes toolbar. By the way, once you get used to fusion, you probably won't use this toolbar that often. You mostly do the shift space bar, select tool thing, cause you'll know what you want. But when you're exploring things like in just learning, just figuring out what the heck all the buttons do. Well, it's nice to actually have some buttons here. And so all I did was just take all of these shapes and put them down here in our toolbar, just so it's easy for us to look at, work with and such. I'll move these around to be in some kind of reasonable category. So let's talk about shapes to start out with. This is one of those things in Fusion, uh, like a lot of things that kind of seems like really complicated, but it's done this way for a reason. So if we grab a star, let's say, we start with the star shape and we just can't see anything. One reason is we don't have this connected, but also if we hit two on the keyboard, nothing shows up. Oh, it's just a great time. Well, the reason why is because these shape nodes actually act a lot like the 3D nodes or the particle nodes in that you need a renderer for them. So if you have a shape, you need a shape renderer, which is this one right here, S render. And once you have that, you can hit two on the keyboard and look, there's a shape, neat. Hey, that's cool. Let's grab this, make it a five point star, make it make it reasonable here. Pretty cool. Now, what a shape does is just render, obviously, a shape to the screen. The advantage of using this is normally you would have to mask a background. So to kind of get the same thing, you would have to have some kind of mask on top of a background node, which there are certainly reasons to do that. But this is a nice little, nice little tool. So let's say I want to make a star in the middle and maybe I want to make a square on the side, right? So I can grab this rectangle. But do I need to make another render? Well, I could but we also have a shape merge node. So I can select this shape and click on this and add a shape merge. And I can merge these two shapes together. So now we have the square and the star, and those are both a thing. With the node selected, you can move the shape around and here in the inspector, you can change the width and the height. This feature is obviously pretty new in Fusion because there's a few things that, I mean, I would really like to see. Like, first of all, you can't grab the handles and resize them, which just seems like, man, that would be really nice. You have to do it in the inspector. Also, the width and the height are not linked. And so it seems like there should be a option for that. But I'm sure that's something that they're going to add over time. For now, you just have to do a lot of stuff in the inspector. But here's where shapes kind of start to get really cool because, you know, Fusion is all about using nodes and, you know, doing things in a way that is maybe not super intuitive. But once you start building more complicated things, it's pretty handy to have things kind of broken out in all these nodes. And so if you're going to want to move a shape around, you probably leave it in the middle and add a transform. And so there's a special node called shape transform with that node selected. I'll grab that. And now this is just like a transform node everywhere else in fusion, but we have take this rectangle off for now, but we have sizing, rotation, pivot, all this kind of stuff you can use to transform your shapes. I thought I told you to be a five pointed star. What are you doing? Shapes always got a disrespect. And so again, what's cool is even though for something like this, it seems a little complicated, it's pretty clear what's happening in the nodes, right? We're making a star we're transforming it somehow, and we're gonna merge it with other shapes before we render it. In addition to being able to transform shapes, we can stack some nodes here and add something called duplicate. Let's put that in there. And shape duplicate will make copies of this shape and offset them and size them. And it'll kind of procedurally generate these things based on these numbers here. You can even have it rotate a certain amount each time and get some really kind of wild effects here. 
It's one of those things where they kind of throw you to the wolves and give you a ton of these tools. It's really up to you how you use them. So that'll duplicate stuff. Something that's sort of similar is grid. What that'll do is add duplicates, but it'll do it in a grid. So let's take this transform and size this down to like 0.2. So now we have a bunch of stars and this will put these all in a grid for us. I'll lay them out and you can adjust the spacing and everything. So that's really nice because you know, pretty quickly, you can see that if we just had a star, to make two nodes to just draw a star is like a lot of work. To make a star smaller and make three nodes to make a star smaller is a lot of work. But then check this out, adding something like this grid, think about how much work it would be to do this by hand. You'd have to like duplicate this over itself and offset it and, you know, merge it over itself. Like it would be miserable to do this, but this is just one node. And so that's what I call like the, the node threshold, or I guess it's like where you start to go, oh, okay, this is really powerful and it's really easy. <laughs> Instead of like, why is it so complicated? And then further than that, after this grid, we have a few different nodes that kind of adjust how the shapes interact and sort of some specific parts about the actual shape. So for instance, as expand, will expand each of these shapes. It'll kind of plump them out. You could bring it back and sort of bling. So you could have it kind of go bling. <laughs> That's a nice way to make a little, little shine. If Team Rocket and Pokemon gets thrown into the sky and then at the end, it's like, <laughs> uh, I love Pokemon. Anyway, kind of similar to that. Let's get rid of this is S outline. And that will just draw a stroke around the edges of any shapes that you have connected to it. And what's cool is you can connect multiple shapes and merge them and everything. You could add, we're adding this before the merge, but if we add the rectangle as well, and we put the outline after it, it's going to outline all the shapes. And so it depends on the node order here, but it's pretty, uh, it's pretty cool. Let's just size this rectangle down for now so we can see what's going on. I'll take this S outline out. We also have S jitter and jitter does some weird stuff. It can actually move things around a little bit. And if we switch this jitter mode to random, this will actually kind of move these, wobble these back and forth every frame. And so you can get some kind of cool effects like this. Uh, you can also do point jitter, which will move the specific points for the shape around and it's kind of cool so you can do stuff like kind of that animated cartoony sort of chatter effect you know definitely worth playing around with jitter and we also have s boolean which is sort of like a merge but it controls how the shapes interact with each other a little more so right now anytime that you talk about a boolean it's basically mixing two things together and controlling how it looks when it does that right so right up here when it says operation here let's go zoom in a little bit. Right now it's using intersections. So anything that's both in the rectangle and the stars is showing up. It's kind of like a Venn diagram, right? It's the middle of the Venn diagram. Then we have union, which just adds them both together. Subtract, which takes away the top one from the bottom one. And then XOR, which is basically the opposite of intersect. So anywhere where both of these shapes are, it just deletes the pixels. You can also recolor things in this node. And so if we wanted to make a Oh my gosh, I just realized we could make a real Venn diagram. Let's do it! By the way, Venn diagrams, for the record, are the only way to present data. Fight me. Let's do like 0 0.3, 0 0.3. We'll offset this, 0.3, something like that. We'll make a Boolean and we'll take this ellipse and copy and paste it. We'll put it here. And this time we'll say 0.1 like that. And guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna do this Boolean down here, but we're also gonna merge this over one another. We're also going to take this Boolean and pipe that into the merge. <laughs> and now check this out. Let's make the, the intersection of this blue and then the ellipse, this ellipse. Oh no, let's do it. Let's do it proper. Okay. This is going to be green. This one's going to be yellow and this one's going to be blue. I believe we just won the internet. Take that data visualization. In fact, let's even, let's even make this make a little more sense here. Boom. There's our Venn diagram. Put it over our background. We're done, kids. We're done. Hold on. Put some text here. <laughs> Stonks. So now that we've learned a little bit about shapes, let me show you something that I whipped up. Here's a little graphic for a shoe company, right? Just some shoes, whatever you want. And this is using all of the nodes that we looked at here just to do some fanciness. This right on effect is from the S outline node right here. You can animate the length, this length slider, and it will basically draw things on. So that's a really nice thing. 
and I'm just reusing this star, transforming it, rotating it, putting it in a grid, adding some jitter to it. I'm also using the same star and drawing the outline around it and making a cool little graphic here. So, I mean, the sky's the limit with this, with shapes, and you can mix them with all different other kinds of things. It's beautiful. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you want to learn more about fusion and what the heck all these nodes are, here's a video on that. Don't you worry. Don't you worry about a thing. We're in this together.